So I have here a soda can, and it's filled with water to about right there. And I have here a chip, and I'm going to burn this chip. And as we do, energy will transfer into the water. We will measure then how much the temperature goes up with this thermometer and be able to make some kind of calculation, or at least estimation, about how much energy in calories is in that chip. We'll also learn about the energy unit in the metric system, which is the joule. So I'll light this chip, and this water has been sitting here for several minutes, and the thermometer has been a steady 22.3 degrees Celsius. And you can see that that water temperature is starting to creep up already. It always amazes me at how well a chip can burn and how quickly the temperature will go up when it does. Now here my screen dies, but we've gone up by about 3 degrees Celsius. Now the definition of a calorie is the energy it takes to make one liter of water go up by 1 degree Celsius. I'm going to lift this up off the bottom now so that I'm not reading the temperature of the can but of the water. Since this can only had a tenth of a liter of water in it, it's going to have its temperature change by ten times more than if it had one whole liter in it. And now it's gone up by about four degrees Celsius. Let's say that it ends up at five degrees Celsius. So with our definition, that would mean that if we had had one whole liter of water in there, it would have only gone up 0.5 degrees. And so then that would be 0.5 calories of energy got transferred into the water. Now I'm sure there really is more energy in that in the chip, but that's all that's actually getting into the water. Okay, so we've learned that the definition of a calorie has to do with how much energy it takes to heat up water a certain amount. But there's more than one kind of calorie. There are uppercase calories, which are food calories, and there are lowercase calories. Lowercase calories, it takes a thousand of them to add up to a food calorie, which is sometimes called a kilocalorie. But I'm always going to be referring to a calorie, a food calorie, uh, for this. So when they're trying to find the energy in food, they, they use a device called a bomb calorimeter rather than soda can like I did. And this bomb calorimeter, you burn the food on the, in the inner container and then there's water surrounding it. And then the energy going from the food gets absorbed by the water and it can't go anywhere else. So it's a more accurate way to do it. And they can measure the temperature rise of the water and f figure out how many calories are in it. But it turns out that nowadays food scientists don't even burn food because they've done it enough that they know from all of their data that if something is a protein, it'll give off about four calories per gram, carbohydrate about four calories per gram, a fat about nine, and alcohol about seven. So they just need to figure out in the food they're interested in how many pro, uh, grams of protein, carbs, and fats, and all that there are in it. So as an example, if we take a look at this nutrition bar wrapper, it's got 7 grams of fat, 24 grams of total carbs, and 14 grams of protein. So if we just take that, those grams and multiply it by the energy of each category, we come up with 56, 96, and 63 for a grand total of 215 calories. Now all these amounts here I have rounded, so they're not exact. They should actually be decimals. So this isn't going to be exactly right, but it should be close. And if we look at the wrapper, it says 210 calories. So we are right in the ballpark um, using this method. Now when we're measuring energy in physics, we typically will use joules when we're finding potential energy or kinetic energy. And um, it's capital J when you write it uh, as a unit. And a joule is a very small unit, so it takes a lot of them to add up to anything. Uh, about 4,000 of them make up one food calorie. So kind of as an example, if someone's up on a ladder painting their house or um, trimming a tree or something like that and they have 10,000 joules of potential energy due to gravity, then we could take that 10,000, divide by 4,000, and we're about two and a half calories worth of energy. Now it might seem weird to be talking about the energy of someone up on a ladder in terms of food calories, but they're both units of energy and you could do that. 
So I encourage people as they're learning about joules to in their mind kind of convert it to calories so you have a sense for how much energy it is. So here's some examples with joules to kind of give you um, a better feel for it. A Tic Tac, which is about two calories, has 8,000 joules. Running a hair dryer for one minute, about 100,000 joules. Sunlight on a square meter for one minute, about 41,000 joules. Now food examples are pretty good. So here's some food labels from other countries. And notice that they're listing the energy content in kilojoules. So this would be 138,000 joules. And this label right here has kilojoules, but also kilocalories, which would be uppercase calories, food calories. Here are a couple labels from Costa Rica. And this, um, this one on the left is from McDonald's menu. Their energy content is in calories. Notice the Big Mac is almost 500. So this one is almost 800 calories uh, right here. And the orange drink is about, um, well, it's listed in 1,300 kilojoules or about 300 calories. Now, since a Big Mac is a really uh, common thing, I'll list that kind of separately here. That's got about 2 million joules of energy, which is right around, as we saw, 500 calories. So it's kind of a convenient yardstick to say, you know, if something has um, so many joules of energy, a car moving or whatever, you could say, oh, that's like three Big Macs worth of energy or something. So one of the key points here is because food has so much energy in it, anytime you want to lose weight, your plan needs to somehow include eating less. Now, as a side note, a British thermal unit that some of you may have heard of, BTUs, um, is interesting to look at. Its definition is similar to calories. It is the energy required to heat one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit now instead of Celsius. And it takes about a thousand joules for um, BTUs, or for one BTU. A small car moving at neighborhood speeds has about 50,000 joules. And then it's interesting to look at the energy in a gallon of uh, different grades of gas and even different types of fuel. Ethanol just does not have as much energy in it. So if you have a gallon of ethanol in your car, your car will not go as many miles. Um, if you have regular gas, it also does not have as much as premium down here. So there's a little experiment you can do to figure out is the extra amount of money you pay for premium worth getting uh, the extra miles or is it not worth it? So you've got to figure that cost-benefit analysis out. And then diesel actually has the most uh, energy in it per gallon. So speaking of fuel, there's this uh, book called The Physics for Future Presidents and he's got a chapter in it um, that talks about energy and why we're addicted to oil. And Dr. Richard Muller um, at Berkeley is the one that goes through this. So I'll share a few of those ideas with you now. So let's see how gasoline compares to other things. If you take an equal weight of flashlight batteries and an equal weight of gasoline, the gasoline has a thousand times more energy in it. Even our best batteries uh, that we have developed are only 1% of the energy that the same weight of gasoline would have. When you look at uh, the energy of a bullet, gasoline has 720 times more energy. That's a, mostly because gunpowder or something similar to that in bullets is only uh, one fifteenth as much energy as gasoline. And then some of that energy goes into heating up the rifle or the gun as well, so you don't get it all into the bullet. We've already looked at food a little bit, but gasoline has four times the energy of the same weight of steak, two times the energy of chocolate chips, and 1.4 times the energy of butter. Now, is there anything that does beat uh, gasoline? Well, there's a few things. So pound per pound, natural gas is better, 1.3 times better. Hydrogen gas or liquid is 2.6 times better, but the problem with hydrogen gas is that it already comes in things. You have to separate it first. And to separate it requires energy. And right now, it takes more energy to separate it than we can get out of the hydrogen. In fact, it's like 30 to 40 percent. 
However, we can get um, hydrogen from natural gas and it doesn't take as much energy to get it out. But the problem is we get more energy from the natural gas by burning it than we would get out of the hydrogen. So that's not a great solution. Uh, fission with uranium or plutonium where you're splitting atoms apart is two million times uh, better by weight. And then fusion is sort of the holy grail of energy, six million times better. So maybe someday these will be developed better somehow so that we're not so dependent on gasoline. But for right now, gasoline just has so much energy in it that it's hard to beat it.